views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Now here's your host, Katherine Moss. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Katherine Arti Moss, and you're listening to Coming Clean here on Transformation Talk Radio. So this show is for women who are ready and willing to step out from, I'd like to say the shadows and start living the life that they really want. So this show is really about truth telling to most importantly to yourself. Um, cause I think that from in my own personal experience that when in addiction and, um, actively using, there's not a whole lot of, um, seeing the world as it really is or seeing our situations as they really are. Um, we kind of like to see them how we'd like them to be. Um, I know that was my experience. So it's truth telling to others, but more importantly to ourselves, and this show is for for it's um for women in um recovery or I'd like to say uncovery from you know anything that they want to rid themselves from um it can be in um, a substance addiction or you know behavioral um destructive patterns that um no longer serving you so you could be a woman who is sober newly sober long sober um, or women who maybe think that, um, you know, a relationship, um, be it to alcohol or anything else, drugs, relationship, uh, relationships with people, um, is becoming something they want to change in their lives. So it's, um, this show is very open and, um, accepting and, um, to give you freedom and choices into helping you along your journey that you're on, whatever that may look like. And, through my own experience of going of exploration and seeking, I find that it's, and I've talked about this before, that it's very important to have options. Like whatever we choose is our own choice, but the, the fact that when, when it, we have, okay, options in front of us, then we really feel free to, to live our lives the way we want. Um, so it's summer right now, and I just made an episode with um, Rebecca Watson, and we talked about sober holidays, which was really fun to record because we both have, um, like, she has so many wonderful tips. She travels a lot and also travels for work a lot, so she had a lot of things to say, and I thought it was just a really fun episode to record because um, I really love Rebecca, and um, so if you're interested, you should check that out. That was the last episode. It's called Sober Vacations, I think it was. So yeah, it's summer and, you know, sometimes it can be a difficult time, especially when we're, you know, traveling. So that can be, um, that could, that may, might be helpful for you to check out. And for, I mean, I, I'm in my almost fourth year of sobriety. It'll be, um, from alcohol, it'll be four years in October and, what I've noticed and also what a lot of guests have talked about is um, that don't don't expect this um, just like shooting off inc incline in your recovery. Just things keep getting better and better and better and better. And, oh, you know, this is so great. I really thought that was how it was going to be. Um, I thought that my life was, OK, well, this thing, things are starting now and I've kicked alcohol and, you know, it's really things are going to get better. Um However, that's not really how life works. You know, we have ups and downs and twists and turns. So we had this idea in our mind what it what it's going to look what it's going to look like and you know, it's just a straight a straight shot to wherever we're going if you even know where you're going. Um but in reality, you know, there's ups and downs and, you know, swinging across canyons and, you know, like 
rain and thunderstorms. And so it's just, um, that's just the way life is. And I'm really like thinking, I'm like, yeah, um, we really have to also, um, you know, be, be okay with that. And also, um, to realize that that's just the reality of it and accept reality, however it is. Um, and in, um, in, in recovery or uncovery, as I like to call it, um, sometimes even after a few years, um, I remember I had Veronica Valley on the show and she was my very first guest and she had several, several long time recovery. And she said, she's always learning. She's like, right. When I think that I've got it all figured out, like I've, okay, I've kind of gone in every dark corner of my recovery. She's always finding those other things. And I think that I'm starting to learn that as well. So sometimes deeper issues can surface, um, even after a few years in, on the journey, because maybe those, um, issues weren't like ready to, to be uncovered yet. Um, and then when they do come up, you know, hopefully we have the, the, the tools and the support that we need to, um, to look at them if we're ready to do so. Um, another thing, um, on my website, katherinemoss.com, I have, um, something com- coming up, um, a woman's empowerment unrecovery group. Um, this is going to be an online meeting. And also if you happen to be in the Zurich, Switzerland area, a in-person meeting, this is coming up in fall 2016. So if you are someone who is maybe unsatisfied with the options for recovery groups, and you're looking for something more, and you're looking for something that supports you and what you want to do, and you don't want other people telling you what to do this might be something that's, um, attractive for you. Um, this is going to be a a woman, a a, a recovery group for women, um, based on the 16 steps of charlottecastle.com. And you can check out the 16 steps at charlottecastle.com under 16 steps. And if this is something that you resonate with, um, I really like to hear about it. And you can send me an email at Catherine. Ma, um, it's Catherine at CatherineMoss.com. Or you can go on my website and send me, um, you know, like a, a message off the, like, you know, contact page. So that's Catherine at CatherineMoss.com. So, and also, if you like the show, please, um, I ask you this every week, but please like the Coming Clean Facebook page. And also, you can sign up my um, somewhat news monthly newsletter. I don't always get newsletters out. I'm not with it isn't enough to get them out, but normally I send out a, an email just letting you know who my guests are for the upcoming shows. And sometimes some interesting meditation and yoga, uh, stuff. I'm also, I, I, another thing I had Nikki Myers on the show and I, that was one of the, one of the really great episodes. I'm going to be airing that again. And she talked, she's the creator of yoga for 12 step recovery. And I am leaving tomorrow to go to the UK and do her training. So I am going to be doing an intensive Y 12 SR, um, training and bringing that back to Switzerland and also incorporating that in my yoga teaching and, um, in the women's empowerment uncovery group. So I'm really excited about that, about joining yoga and 12 step recovery together. Great. Um, so I am going to briefly introduce my topic of the day before we go for a break. Um, it's on boundaries. And if you were to have talked to me or asked me about like relevance of boundaries in your life, even like a year ago or even a few months ago, I'd be like, what, what, you know, like why, what is this needed like for, or why do I need boundaries in my life? Um, but they're very, very important. And up until a a little, maybe a few months ago or less than that, I've realized the lack of boundaries in my life. And I think that this is something a lot of other women can relate to, um, especially women who have had, um, history of addiction, creating personal boundaries. And online I hear, I mean, in, in just in a Wikipedia search, personal boundaries are, as it says, guidelines, rules or limits that a person creates to identify for themselves 
what are reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to behave towards him or her and how they will respond when someone's, someone steps past those limits. So, um, this was not always something that I have been very good at doing. Um, I would say that I've had a lack of boundaries for my entire life of childhood and um, adulthood. And it says how they will respond when someone says past those limits. Um, a lot of times there was no response. You know, it was kind of, all right, um, do what you need to do what you want to do. Um, but I don't know if I would have always responded with, you know, hey, that's not okay. Um, I wasn't really comfortable um, telling people what I, what was not okay, what was okay and what I needed from them and wasn't a good, at, I think it also comes from communication, communicating well, exactly what you want from other people. So, um, yeah, in my youth, um, I really kind of seeking safety and looking for, um, you know, someone or something to change or control me. So I think i um, open and searching for that. And maybe it was picked up upon. So you could also say um, we can get into the realm of, of codependency. Um, and this is not, I don't know so much about codependency. I do think that though it's a kind of a blanket word and it's not really helping anyone with just labeling themselves codependent? Are we really getting in touch with how we're feeling when we just put a blanket statement on ourselves and say we're codependent? Um, we can also say there's been a lot of um, talk and a lot of people have written about internalized oppression um, instead of codependent. We're internalizing oppression against us and we're acting this out on um, – in our actions. So this is something that's new to me. Um, internalized depression instead of codependency. Um, because the word codependency can also be, um, somewhat, um, you know, negative for a lot of people. And maybe people don't want to identify themselves as codependent. So in, in, in boundaries, we have, you know, obviously physical boundaries that people can surpass emotional and psychological boundaries and spiritual boundaries. And, um, all of these are important and we need to, um, protect ourselves. And for a long time, I didn't do a whole lot of protection of myself. I wanted to be open and happy and accepting of all others, but, um, we need to create these boundaries. And sometimes in our sobriety, that's the first time that we're learning how to do so. So you're listening to Coming Clean with radio with myself, Catherine Artimas. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to continue the conversation on boundaries. Stay with us. Brand consultant and coach Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're a person with a dream and unsure where to start or a CEO of a successful company wondering what's next, Jen Morgan and the RAD method empowers you to play to your strengths and focus your competitive edge so you can show up in the world as your most powerful brand. Go to jenmorgan.com or call 206-972-5366. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. What is a brilliant culture? And how do we create them? Why are they important? 
Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you design a culture that is authentic, innovative, and successful. Learn how to create change with Cultural Brilliance Radio, the DNA of organizational excellence and Claudette Rowley. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit ClaudetteRowley.com. Song of the Heart, Walking the Path of Light, from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coming Clean Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Arati Moss. Today, I am talking to you about boundaries and why are they important to to um, to create in especially coming out of addiction. So before I talked about physical boundaries, obviously people when they feel the need that they can touch you or do anything to you and use your use their bot use your body however they see fit, going against um, any type of boundary that you have, psychological or emotional um, boundaries, you know, um, overstepping um, their emotional and psychological influence on you, and also spiritual, you know. Um, affecting your soul. So when I was younger, you know, I didn't, I definitely fell in this category of not setting boundaries. And I was really open and searching, I guess, for a lot of times, thinking a relationship could fix me, or I was just waiting for um, the right person to come along. And so that I could kind of depend on other people. And um, I definitely had a I also had to say that I never felt that I was choosing anything. I didn't have choices in my life. And I felt like I was always taking whatever was the default because I didn't make choices. Didn't feel like I had any. I would, maybe I was too scared to do anything and ended up in relationships with people that I didn't want to be with. Um, but never broke up with anyone, never got, never quit a job. I always waited until I was let go or if other person (laughs) broke up with me, I never made the me took the step to to do that myself. And um I had a definite fear of voicing opinions, concerns or anger and um I guess sometimes that we're um not all women are are raised or not all um young girls are raised um to voice their opinions, concerns, especially anger. You know, where we're not meant women all the time aren't meant to be angry or, you know, or, oh, just detach from your feelings. But anger can be a very transformational um, emotion that can be used in a positive ways. And um, as I grew up, I did um, find that I was very angry and I didn't know why, especially um, in under the influence of alcohol, got very angry. And um, yeah, so this can be used in a, a positive way if you're channeling it in according accordingly. Um, however, just violent, angry outbursts to other people never really took me anywhere. So, so when you are afraid, I mean, I can only speak from my personal experience. However, when people, um, are afraid of voicing their opinions, concerns, um, or, you know, things that they really believe in, it leaves a feeling of, of like shame and anger. So something happened to you or someone said something to you or someone touched you in a way that was not okay, but we can't find the voice inside of ourselves to speak up. Um, it creates a feeling of shame. 
amongst many, many other um, motions. I'm not a doctor and I'm not, um, you know, so, uh, an expert on this. I can only speak from my own experience. Um, it just brings up so many, um, feelings that are just overwhelming. And a lot of times it can also, um, bring on a relapse, you know, it can bring on, um, someone using whatever their, um, addiction or drug of choice is when, there, it's like, um, again, Veronica Valley, my first guest on the show talked about, um, this need to uh, abuse substances or alcohol or anything, um, when they're not living your truth. And when you're not living your truth, it's almost unbearable to, um, to, to like live this way. So we, we have to know out and we have to do something. So, um, this can often, um, turn into a relapse or, you know, using the drug again. I remember when I was younger, um, I just always felt that no one, none of my friends or people that I met were treating me in the way that they tra treated other people. And I wonder these days if, if it was, I was unconsciously or something like this, giving the, giving the message to somebody that they didn't really need to treat me in a way that they needed that I, you know, that was respectful. Um, and I remember someone telling me, Hey, you know, you teach people how to treat you. And I don't know if I agree with this because a part of me thinks, well, can't people just be kind, you know, and treat people, everybody with respect. However, if I am teaching other people how to treat me and I have a low idea of myself, then they're going to be picking up on that. Even if I don't, exert, you know, like exert that to other, other people, people will pick up on, Hey, you know, you don't need to treat me well because I don't have a high, um, respect for myself. Um, yeah. So I always felt I never really got a lot of respect or consideration from other people and, or I always felt like I wasn't listened to. And, um, this was really, um, frustrating for me. And, and when I think about it now these days, it's, I, I didn't have any boundaries set and, um, didn't have a lot of, um, respect for myself. Um, I always allowed other, other people to kind of, I don't know how this sounds like be above, like in the relationship, um, to be above me. And I really had a, a strong fear of, um, authority and, um, really, struggled with that. So authority, um, was fearful for me, anyone in any type of authority, um, position. Now, um, it's interesting to think how are, how boundaries are crossed and it can be different for many people. I found this very interesting website. Um, well, it's called live bold and bloom.com. And, um, a woman named Barry Davenport wrote an article on 10 ways to establish personal boundaries. And she lists a few, um, she writes, writes, here are some signs you have not set personal boundaries. So I'm going to read a few of these because I do find that I can relate to a lot of them and they're very interesting. So saying no, when you mean yes, or yes, when you mean no. So not being very clear about what you want. Feeling guilty when you do say no. And I think this is such a big one that we feel guilt when we're thinking about ourselves because we think that we need to think about other people more. Acting against your integrity or values in order to please other people. And this goes out to um, external approval, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Not speaking up when you have something to say. Adopting another person's beliefs or ideas so where you are accepted. Not calling out someone who mistreats you. Accepting physical touch or sex when you don't want it. Allowing yourself to be interrupted or distracted to accommodate another person's immediate wants or needs. Giving too much just to be perceived as useful. Becoming overly involved in someone's problems or difficulties. I think those two are, um, you know, we always ha are, we're nice and we're helping other people, but what is our motive? Are we trying to fulfill our own needs or theirs. Allowing people to say things to you or in front of you that make you uncomfortable. I have definitely experienced this. So when, when that happens, you feel so angry that they could do that, but then you're angry at yourself. Like, how could I let this happen? 
I was working at a job where um, my checks, my my monthly or, you know, my biweekly paycheck bounced all the time. And I never said anything. And I think that they might have chose me to have that check bounce or something or, you know, and I never said anything about it. Um, and that really made me more angry than the actual check bouncing because I just didn't say anything about it. And I, and I, I just accepted that that was okay. And it wasn't okay. Um, and the last, the last point, not defining and communicating your emotional needs in your closest relationships. So, um, if the, any of these, um, ring true for you, maybe, um, you know, some personal boundaries would be helpful to you. Um, so we can think how, because guilt set plays such a big role. How do we set good boundaries without feeling guilty all the time? This is a really good question because, um, I, I find this, you know, that I, I do experience guilt or I also, um, when I find that other people are, are setting boundaries against me, it makes me angry in the past. And I didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't conscious of what was going on, but I noticed that I would get kind of angry and I would get kind of hurt because they, I knew that they were protecting themselves and I hurt me because I knew that I couldn't do the same thing. I could do it, but I wasn't doing the same thing. So, um, in the 16 step program by Charlotte Castle, number 12 says we seek out situations, jobs, and people who are fir- affirm our intelligence, perceptions, and self-worth and avoid situations or people who are hurtful, harmful, or demeaning to us. So this, in my opinion, kind of sounds like, um, putting up, um, you know, establishing some safe boundaries around, um, people, um, you know, we, we want to be around people who affirm our intelligence, perceptions, and self-worth and avoid those situations where people who are hurtful and harmful to us because the company we keep is so important and it can really influence how we behave and the way that we live our lives. So I don't have a whole lot of, um, experience with this. However, what I've started to do is to start tuning in to what I, I want to say and I want to behave. Because when that's clear, like say something happens in the moment and it's really uncomfortable and you think, okay, what do I want to say? What do I want to say or behave? What do I want to do? Um, and I find that the more I don't do this, if I don't say what I really need to say, it becomes more and more painful. So even little things, I need to say them. Before it was okay to just let it go and then I would have this like, anger and sadness and maybe I would drink. But now, um, you know, I really, I try to, um, to really say what is in my soul. Um, and you can even say, you know, Hey, I'm trying to be true to myself. You know, I think a lot of people will, um, will relate to that. Like, ah, cool. You know, I'm just trying to be true to what I'm thinking and feeling right now. And it's, you know, it's X, Y, Z, it's this, you know, so people, you know, could, you know, support you in that. Um, And, um, so we're going to take another break. You're listening to coming clean radio, the art of transparency. And when I come back, I'm going to talk a little bit more about boundaries and also, um, how, how to express, um, you know, feelings and, um, your needs. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. 
live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Beyond being this amazing neurologist, inventor, author, Dr. Dan Cohen has been called to look at technology and look at personal and spiritual development and merge these together. As technology uses the healing and psycho-spiritual effects of synchronized sounds, vibrations, electromagnetic fields, and how that interacts with us in our nervous system in what we're calling the Soltech chair. The Soltech Lounge induces profound levels of relaxation that transition over time into deep meditative states. The synchronized sound vibration and magnetic field induce these states. The subject doesn't have to work at it. To learn more, go to soltechwellbeing.com. That's S-O-L-T-E-C, well-being. Welcome back, everyone, to Coming Clean Radio, The Art of Transparency. I'm your host, Catherine R.T. Moss. So today I am here on on my own talking about boundaries because I think this is something that a lot of people can resonate with and it's really important. So I talked about ways that you can express your truth and create boundaries or, you know, speak up um, and, um, you know, when something isn't okay. Another thing we can do, um, that's, well, lately I've been really, um, influenced by, um, nonviolent communication developed by Marshall Rosenberg. And so the, in nonviolent communication, he, he takes you through all the steps of, you know, observing a situation, the feelings that you feel behind the situation, the needs present, and also requesting at the end. So requesting, um, from another person, uh, what it is that you want. So instead of saying something like, don't do that, don't say this to me, instead making it a positive statement of what you would like the person to do, um, and making it very, um, concise and, um, and clear and avoiding anything vague. So being really clear and expressing exactly what you, um, would like from the person, he says in um in the book that I'm reading right now and I'm really enjoying it um can can be very successful. So instead of, you know, don't do that um or don't don't leave the stove on when I leave or instead say um when you're not here, please turn off the stove. I know that's a bad example, but um just being really um precise and positive about what you would like to request from that person. And I've used it a little bit and it's worked really well for me. Um, and if you're interested in it, it's a really great book. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about how boundaries are crossed and I've had a little bit of experiences with this and I'm sure a lot of people have, especially in recovery and recovery groups. The first one is hugging and physical contact that, pe- from, that, that people just, some people just expect that from you. And this is also common in recovery groups. Just because we're all in a recovery group doesn't mean that I want to hug you. (laughs) I'm quite, um, I'm open and I'm happy and, you know, 
I think, welcoming, but um, sometimes I don't always feel so comfortable. And if your body is saying no, just it's okay. You don't have to to hug this person. And pe- people believe that that they can do this is not right. So, um, you know, putting out a hand for a handshake or if you don't want to shake the hand, you know, just deciding and doing what feels right for you and not feeling that you have to do something just to be nice. You don't have to be nice. Let's not be nice. Okay. (laughs) Um, the second one that I've noticed is people unloading emotional problems, AKA long talks at you and not really with you. And again, this is in um, recovery circles and recovery groups that sometimes, you know, I make a lot of phone calls and there are people that just seem to be on the other line um, talking at you and you don't, it's, there's not like people are talking to you to get some like, you know, you know, clarity or help. They just, or just, you know, some, an ear to listen. They want to talk at you and you get off the phone kind of tired and you're also, I, you want to get off the phone, um, which brings me to my next one. However, um, yeah, so there's not a whole lot of like communication. It's just being talked at, which leads me to my next one. Um, long phone conversations, talking at you when you wish you could hang up or long, never ending dates or meetings. So, um, Sometimes on the phone, I have like wanted to go and I've wanted to hang up the phone, but I just don't. I always wait for the other person to say that they have to go. So in one of the the ways that I am practicing this is um, setting boundaries or sometimes when I get on the call, I'll be like, hey, I only have 30 minutes. Um, I only have five minutes to talk to you. Um, The same thing goes when there's some people that you meet and you spend an hour with them and then, you know, they seem like, Oh, you have to go now. Well, yeah, I do. And you can, again, when you meet the person, you can say, I only have this amount of time just because just to state it in the beginning. So you're not, um, held captive, um, in this meeting or a date. And another one that I wrote was maybe people who just make you feel weird, but you don't distance yourself because you don't want to be rude. And maybe other people can resonate with this of just like always feeling a certain way, but not acting on it because you don't want to be rude. You don't want you want to be nice. Um, your body gives the messages. That's what I've been learning. And your mind might might not, I've had, and I think I talked about it, freaking out, like body feeling really uncomfortable around certain people. And, um, you know, the mind saying, what's wrong with you? Keep your cool. Listen to the body because it knows you don't have to understand it. You know, you can feel, oh, well, why am I feeling like this? The person's nice and I don't know what's going on. It doesn't matter. You don't need to understand it. Just like, don't put yourself in the situation. Be rude for once. Just be, un- be not, you don't have to be nice. Um, or just distance yourself. You know, if you, if this person makes you feel weird, then back off. Um, you know, we can also take back our voices, you know, and use them and to empower ourselves. Again, we need to speak like we have the need to speak our truths or else, you know, we feel bad inside. Um, it's just a really uncomfortable feeling to, to live that way. And, there is another step, step number 10. It's right here. So step number 10 in the 16 step model says we learn to trust our reality and daily affirm that we see what we see. We know what we know and we feel what we feel. And this is really trusting in our experience trusting our intuition and our wisdom that we hold in our bodies. So that is really, really so powerful. We see what we see, we know what we know, and we feel what we feel, that our experiences are valid and that we're trusting in them and not allowing. Um, and if, if something is not in line with how what we believe, in line with our values, we say, hey, you know, that's not right. 
and I'm not, I'm sorry, but that doesn't, or not even saying sorry. I'm saying sorry for no reason. We don't apologize. Like this is not okay with me. Um, and it can, and it, you know, like it can be anything little. And cause I think that, um, this not wanting to be rude and wanting approval from others, people externally from everyone else is so big. You know, we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to be this or that. We don't want to be rude. But um, why is it so much more important that we're not rude and at the same time suffering because we're not um, doing the acting and, and living the way that we want? Isn't that more important than some, you know, Joe Schmo thinking we're rude? Like, because I don't care if someone thinks I'm rude. I've been nice for too long. I'm sure you can tell. I keep talking about it. Um, and it's like approval from other people, which is really, really, um, really uh, a big thing for me and a lot of people. I talked to some other women um, that instead of com- getting approval from within, we're seeking approval from without outside ourselves. And, you know, that safety and power that we look for in other people can come from within us. So I teach, I, um, maybe some other people listening in are also teachers. I teach yoga and meditation. And when you're up there, sometimes it can be really, um, scary because, um, you know, you want people to like you and you want people to like, you know, like your class and you're getting, you know, feedback, um, automatically, you know, and if it's not going well, you're like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, cause sometimes it doesn't go well. And, um, and you want people to say, Hey, good job. Or, Oh my God, I really like this. You know? So I'm like constantly seeking that out is really exhausting. And I was doing that for a long time and it was so stressful teaching. And what I've been trying to do is ask myself, is the class that I'm going to be teaching, is this in line with what, what I want and what I, what I believe in and what I feel that I, I should be doing And when the class was over, is this, um, was that in line with, you know, with what I believe? Um, did I give it my all? Was it, was it, you know, given out of love, you know, in service? And if I can say yes, then I don't care, um, if people will judge me or not accept me because I know that that, and that's self-acceptance can start to come from within me. So, um, yeah, I think, um, that let's be rude for once. So let's speak up for what we want, even if it might offend other people, because it's not right for women to just, um, not rock the boat, um, just to keep others happy because, you know, we matter too, you know, it's not all about, um, about the other people you can, we can care for ourselves. I mean, the word self care is thrown around all the time now, but let's really do it. So before I take another break, I just wanted to, um, remind anyone who's just tuning in that I am creating a women's empowerment uncovery group coming soon. This is going to be an online meeting. And if you happen to be in the Zurich, Switzerland area, it's also going to be an in-person meeting. And, any, yeah, it's just going to be something that if you're perhaps someone looking, um, a woman, um, not satisfied with the, um, recovery, um, solutions and groups like 12 step, if you're not, um, satisfied with this, you might be searching for something else. And this will be based on the 16 steps. So if you are interested in, um, in this group, you can let me know at, Catherine at CatherineMoss.com. So I am going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to continue talking about boundaries and also approval seeking externally. So stay with me. Um, We'll be right back. Tune in 
to The Michael Shane Show the third Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com and connect with the ascended beings to raise your vibration and manifest the life you desire. Get ready to receive healing through the transphysical mediumship of Reverend Michael Shane and the ascended beings. Visit MichaelShane.com. That's M-Y-C-H-A-E-L, Shane.com, and call 425-971-6632 to schedule your full healing session now. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Badili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Coming Clean. I'm your host, Catherine Artimas. So today I am talking about a very interesting topic of setting personal boundaries and why it's important to do so. So moving right along, I always wanted to talk about um, protecting yourself energetically because before I came up with, you know, started thinking more about, hey, you know, I don't have a whole lot of boundaries set in my life. Because I always kind of thought of myself as someone that I wanted, you know, I want to be compassionate. I want to help other people. I want to be there. I want to be aware. However, I can be compassionate and I can be sensitive and um, aware of other people without being completely open and um, maybe taken advantage of. So we can also protect ourselves energetically. Now, and also I was working with a coach and we've been doing some work on, um, some issues that, um, have been coming up for me and he's always helping me create, um, like protection energetically, especially when we talk about things or people who have had negative hold on me, um, and protecting myself, imagining, you know, like the shield around me. And maybe that sounds really like woo woo for some people, but it's actually really helpful. So I imagine this, like, you know, I'm like shielding myself up of when I go there, you know, when I, when, when I unearth some like heavier stuff within that, um, I'm not like bombarded and you may believe, you know, in the energy coming in and out and maybe not. Um, but it's really helped me. And also like in my dream world, I'm able to keep this like 
these things that I don't want to dive into again, which I've gotten rid of protecting them away. So that's like, it's been really helpful. And, um, so yeah, like making shields of like, of creating an, you know, like energy, um, energy barrier, should I say, because out in the world, um, because I am, I think a very sensitive person, many people, maybe, you know, other people listening in are as well that I pick up on all types of feelings from all types of people. Like I will be at the grocery store and the woman checking out is depressed or, you know, in a fall mood and I'll leave upset and I don't know why. And so I get very up, like kind of uprooted and feel like off from seeing also hearing upsetting things. So the ability to shield myself and also to let that go and not let it fester around within me, um, helps because otherwise it's like those things used to sit around inside and maybe it would help that would have like led to, um, you know, drinking or overeating or anything like that. Um, yeah. So you end up suffering and carrying that weight. And and it's like that lady at the grocery store, maybe she got rid of it, and, but it's not, now it's my thing and I'm carrying it around and I don't even want it. <laughs> um, so I talked a little bit about approval seeking. And, um, I think that as women, we are taught to be nice to people in order to be loved. So, um, as a young girl, we're taught to be nice, not to be mean or angry. And that's the way that we believe that we receive love. And I can't say that for everybody, but, um, I've, you know, this is my experience and also a lot of people that, um, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, you know, it was kind of meant to be seen and not heard smile. And I remember being on the train one time and there's this guy like walked by and he was like, smile for me. And I just wanted to ignore him because he was creepy. I was feeling that inside. And he's like, smile, why don't you smile? You know? And he was just saying like, smile. And then this guy behind me was like, dude, don't worry about them. You know, some people just aren't friendly. And I wanted to just like slap both of their, I can't swear on the show. I just wanted to slap both of them because they just didn't get it. And I just, didn't. And then I think in the end I, I smiled because I wanted him to go away. And I was just felt like I was being totally harassed. And cause I was, um, but this like, be nice, smile, you know, and then people will like you just, um, even thinking back on that story really makes me angry. Um, so some of us have, you know, formed ourselves, the sense of ourself around external influences such as relationships. So, um, not having a a really, um, strong identity of self or who we are, what we like, things like that. Um, you know, as a young person, I even saw marriage or being in a relationship as a life's cure or this idea that waiting for someone to come and kind of like take care of you, I know that sounds like really 1950s, but um, I think a lot of it still exists a lot of times today. And with self-acceptance or or approval, uh, I'm sorry, with um, approval seeking, um, feeling the feeling for the need of acceptance outside ourselves and justification is so big. And how are we ever going to get it? How are we ever going to have enough? Like, you're good. You're good. Like, Yes. And then that, if, and and then we can't take any criticism or we can't listen to any, any, like be happy for other people. Um, because I think that if you can't, I, I try always to be open to like good criticism, not just people, um, you know, bashing me for some other reason, but you know, honest, open criticism. I try always to take that because I think that, um, not being able to take, take some judgment, means that, you know, like maybe a bit insecure. And, um, I don't think that we're ever going to be able to get enough acceptance from other people and all those, um, affirmations from other people if we're not feeling that inside ourselves. And I know that's said over and over and over again, but we really need to find this acceptance and justification. You know, I talked about my, at work that I was, you know, that I've, 
started to try to cultivate that within myself. You know, I asked myself, you know, is what I'm doing in line with what I truly believe? And a while ago, I, I, um, I, I did a book and it's like kind of a workbook. It was called, um, the energy of money and which is such a wonderful, um, book. If you have any type of money, money, um, issues, I think it's really, really powerful and you do a lot of work. And so it's not just a book you're reading. We made a, a list of our, what did she call it? Like our values are like, and so in every decision I make, I'm like, is this in line with my, my core beliefs, my core values? And if what I'm doing and what, how I'm behaving and what I'm saying, is this in line? You know, sometimes people are like, oh, just do this or just lie or just do that instead or just eat the piece of meat. Who cares? No one says that to me anymore, but it's just an ex example. I'm like, well, is this in line with my list that I made? Is this in line with my, my core values? If it's not, then it doesn't matter if other people say I'm doing well. It, it, it depends on what I say. And if it is, then I'm like, yes, and that's acceptance. And you did a good job. Good for you. You know, sometimes it's hard to create that voice inside of like, good job, because it's just you, but it can be um, something that we can, we can cultivate. And so do I feel good about it? If yes, then outside approval doesn't matter because I've gotten it from within instead. So before um, we go, I just wanted to really um, touch on, I touched on step 12 and step 10 of the 16 steps. And I also wanted to, to just talk uh, about step one. And I know that I read these in the last episode, but step one is really great. Um, it differs from the 12 steps because it is, um, if you have some, you know, um, if you're turned off by powerlessness, um, this is something that can, um, increase the power that you're feeling as a lot of people have lived their lives completely powerless. And why would we want to go into recovery and talk about, um, being powerless once again, you know, um, for some women, it just doesn't really work and doesn't resonate. And if it doesn't resonate with you, um, once again, the 16 steps could be good, could be, um, an option for you. So number one is we affirm we have the power to take charge of our lives and stop being dependent on substances or other people for our self-esteem and security. Like that is like we have the power to take charge. An alternative is we admit, acknowledge we are out of control with or powerless over X, yet have the power to take charge of our lives and stop being dependent on substances or other people for our self-esteem and security. So in this one, we're admitting that we're out of control. So like, you know, some people need the, you know, okay, I'm, I'm powerless over alcohol. They need that. Um, some people don't, but if you need this, um, you're affirming that powerlessness over the substance or behavior, but you're affirming that you do have the power inside of yourself to take charge of your life and to stop this behavior that's destroying you. So, um, I just love that. And I think that, um, this can be really, really empowering and, um, helpful for so many women. And again, if you're interested in it, um, let me know, send me an email or contact me on my website. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation about, um, about boundaries. This is a, a really, um, important topic to have. And I hope it's, um, I hope that it has, given you some things to think about along and while you're on your, on your road and your journey of uncovery, please join me every Tuesday at 12 Eastern, 11 central and nine Pacific time for coming clean radio. Have a great week and I will see you here next time. You've been listening to coming clean, the art of transparency with Catherine Moss. Join Catherine and countless other women in recovery stepping into their truth and supporting one another living life on purpose. Tune in each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com or visit the archives at ComingCleanRadio.com.